light bulbs were once so awe-inspiring that the very image of one signifies having an idea. As if innovation comes to us in a lightning bolt, powerful and instantaneous. Yet when a reporter questioned Thomas Edison about his own lack of results in inventing them, Edison exclaimed, results? Why, man, I've gotten a lot of results. I know several thousand things that won't work. So why then, when it comes to ourselves, do so many of us bear the cultural burden of feeling like we have to know and stick to some path from the time we're first asked as young children what we want to be when we grow up. We've convinced each other that the straight line is the only acceptable route, that there is no future in stepping off the beaten path. My name is Eve Levinson, and as a multi-time career changer, I'd like to encourage you to rethink those straight lines if they're not the right path for you. Have faith in yourself, the curves and the roundabouts, the delays, and yes, even the things that your parents or potential employers, even your gut, may want to consider mistakes or failures. Much like Edison learned, find those 10,000 ways that don't make your life everything you always dreamed it could be. Now, some of you may be thinking this speech sounds a bit too idealistic, maybe even unrealistic, if you've only ever been told to choose and commit to be afraid of changing course, to not waste your talents and opportunities, whatever that means. But I know firsthand some of the pressures of following someone else's path and the challenges of forging one's own. So let me give you a little background before we really get started. Yes, that's me. When I was a young child, I first wanted to be a veterinarian to help animals. That is, until I learned I'd have to put them down when they got too old or sick. I wanted to be the first female major league baseball player. I wanted to be a writer a journalist, a novelist, a screenwriter. But, you know, none of those things were stable or responsible choices that might allow me to support myself. In high school, I tried on lawyer, thinking my way with words would make me a really great fit, even though I could never envisioned myself doing anything more than I saw playing out in the courtroom scenes on TV. I tried on teacher, earned my first master's degree in education, led classrooms for a number of years, though I was never all that good at the discipline part and I never really wanted to be. I tried on camp counselor and athletic coach at the collegiate level, I tried on social media manager, public relations director, and don't get me wrong, I was good at all of them. Could have picked a career in any one of them, but not one of these roles fit. I always thought that my life would follow a straight path, but it turned out I was destined for a winding one. 
what I didn't know all those years, there's nothing wrong with that. That I've never had to follow anyone's path but my own. How about a few examples? If you're English, you may be familiar with this image, uh, but for the rest of us, the design of a crinkle crankle or a serpentine wall was intended not only to look attractive, though they do, but to be adaptable to varying environmental conditions. Things like uh, the instability of building on wet terrain or the vulnerability of surface area exposure to strong winds. Crinkle crankle walls are more stable and they actually use fewer bricks than straight walls. You see, straight walls, they require buttressing or those pillars you might see every few meters. Sometimes they even require a second whole layer of bricks so the structures can support each other. It turns out that a section of crinkle crankle wall may be 22% longer than a straight wall, but it uses 50% less material than a straight one. So a crinkle crankle wall may be winding, but it's strong enough to stand on its own. How about roundabouts? Now, I'll be honest, uh, the concept is still a bit foreign to this American driver, but studies have shown that roundabouts achieve about a 37% reduction in collisions compared to traffic lights. They reduce traffic in low flow areas and they save costs by not requiring electricity to power lights. That's a pretty powerful symbol. Still, it's important to remember that the straight line is not the wrong path for everyone, just like it's not the wrong path for every driver. Those same studies on roundabouts, well, they show that at intersections that have highly variable flow and speed limits, traffic lights usually win. The point today is that there is room for all paths and it's up to us to find the one that's right for us, whether it's straight or winding. Now, maybe you're mostly on board with this general idea, but you'd like some more tangible examples. So let's consider a few well-known individuals who rejected the straight path they were on and found even wider success pursuing their passions. You most likely know this face, Samuel L. Jackson, the second highest grossing Hollywood actor of all time. Well, he was originally majoring in marine biology when he was arrested for being a civil rights activist in the late 1960s. That was before he ever made it big in Hollywood with his starring role in Pulp Fiction at age 46. Julia Child, well, she was something of a spy in the Second World War before she became a cooking icon when she introduced French cuisine to American homemakers with her cookbook and television show at age 49. Colonel Harlan Sanders, he's become a worldwide phenomenon, right? But that's only after he dropped out of school and quit or was fired from 
we'll just say a lot of jobs, including the military. And then word finally spread about his Kentucky Fried Chicken at age 62. This next one may really surprise you a bit. Um, the comedic actor, Ken Jeong, well, he was a practicing medical doctor and he still changed course. He left medicine entirely after earning fame in such films as The Hangover and TV shows like Community in his 40s. Even Charles Darwin evolved after dropping out of medical school. He joined the HMS Beagle crew, and uh, unfortunately, he suffered from illness for a number of decades, poor guy. But that was all before he ever published On the Origin of the Species at age 50. None of this is to say that the indirect route to pursuing your dreams is an easy one, just that the straight one may not be either. Being authentic takes courage in a world that keeps trying to funnel all of us towards the middle of the bell curve, the norm. Turning away from invested time or money from a fancy title, a big paycheck, even the family business, that takes guts. Pursuing your dreams, though, it won't insulate you from judgment, from challenges. It probably won't be a quick way to put some food on your table or a roof over your head either others lack of understanding of your path does not mean the winding of one's own course lacks value or results. In pursuit of my own dream, I picked up my life. I have now mortgaged myself for the next 20 or more years and have since moved to three new countries as part of my international master's degree program. I'll tell you, there have been times when the fear and the doubt have been overwhelming. When I truly worried that I had made a monumental mistake in leaping as I did for a highly competitive, creative career. But then I got hired as a summer intern at an American television station, mostly because I spoke so passionately to my interviewers about my love of children's television. They gave me the chance not only to learn the industry, but actually to write a couple of my own episodes for a brand new children's television show debuting in 2024. I can now proudly say that I am a professional television writer. I am living my dream. But I could not have gotten here by sticking to the straight lines and known entities that had always been my framework. So while straight lines may work for some people, they are not the only course through life. Experience along an indirect path introduces us to passions, careers that we never even knew existed, and that might just be the exact right fit for us, even if it's only for now. Thank you.